Hey, what's up guys? So we just Googled an LGBTQ church near us in Orlando, and there was one about 20 minutes from the home church out in Apopka. And we just pulled up right now, and there's two ladies outside that are, I guess, putting in like waters and food. Like they're just in the back door, just getting it inside. This is an LGBTQ church. Again, I believe we're gonna go over there getting uh, an interview with them. I believe the Lord's gonna move because I have a heart for the LGBTQ community. I wanna see them come to repentance. I wanna see them come out of deception. I wanna see them be saved with, and filled with the Holy Spirit, delivered from demons, generational curses, broken it's a lot of deep stuff in the lgbtq community man i have a heart for them and i want to see them change which is repent and turn their turn their their entire life and surrender to god to jesus for real because this is blasphemy against god god is not pleased with this you can't have a homosexual church it's straight deception and it's leading people astray it's using the name of jesus to accept you know sodomy and homosexuality and just doctrines of devils so we're gonna go in there right now and we're gonna expose it straight like that let's get it You heard that, right? It's usually a Jezebel spirit that's operating over these type of churches, man. So he's just gonna go over there and ask them if they want to do an interview. And you know I'm gonna adapt. They they probably don't think I'm a pastor. They don't think I'm a, an evangelist. They probably think I'm some random guy. And I'm gonna say, well, because it's Pride Month, you know, and we saw this driving by, we just figured we'd get an interview for our, for our YouTube channel. So you already know what time it is. We gotta win souls, man. We gotta expose darkness. I'm just praying for grace. Let's get it. Hey guys, so we spoke to the, the two people that work for the food bank. One of them actually goes to the church. He said it's a gay church and, and they recommended us to go to the Post Memorial. There's a memorial right now. Um, I know there was a mass shooting years ago and people died at this LGBTQ, a homosexual church, or not church, club. So we're about to go over there right now and they, they recommended us to go. They didn't want to be on camera. They said they didn't. They just didn't feel comfortable. They got nervous. So we're going to go over there to uh, that whole area. There's a whole memorial and everything and there's a bunch of people out there. There's news out there and everything. So we're about to go over there right now and so as you guys can see this is literally an lgbtq gay church straight blasphemy against the lord let's get it so as you guys can see we're here right now we're at the um the location where there was a mass shooting i just did some research and just found out deeper things um about it it was actually um a terrorist attack it was a muslim who had threatened them already and was going into uh to pretty much retaliate against the u.s government and he retaliated by going into a homosexual nightclub to kill people so it was a, an attack from the islamic state and this is back in uh 2016 i believe so there's some people out here as you guys can see there's news reporters Yep, news reporters all over, so it's obviously a public place where we could actually record. So, I'm excited, man. Let's see what happens. As you guys can see, this is like a, a mural, I believe. This is pretty tragic. Look at all these people who died. All these people passed away. This is very tragic, very unfortunate that all these people died. As you guys can see, it's a le legitimate national memorial. It's sad that this had to happen. Again, it was a, it was a terrorist attack from a Muslim man. I think it was uh, he was tied to the Al-Qaeda. Very unfortunate. Very unfortunate. You see, we don't wish death upon nobody, but as you can see, there's consequences to spiritual actions. Not to say that they deserved it, but at the end of the day, Jesus has the keys, you know, to death and hell. No one dies or goes to hell without his permission. He doesn't want people to go to hell, and he doesn't want people to die in these tragic ways. But what happens is, is when we give the enemy legal right over our lives through sin, through going against God, we rebel against God, we walk away from his protection, and we give our protection to the enemy who wants to kill, steal, and destroy us. So when we submit to the devil and we resist God, that's when God begins, like literally, we actually back away from him. And he still wants us to come to Christ. He still wants us to come in. He still wants us to be saved. But if we rebel against him willingly, rebellion is as witchcraft. We're operating as a warlock, as a witch. And a lot of these people, you know, they didn't get a chance to repent. They didn't get a chance to give their life to Christ. They didn't get a chance to, to find Jesus. And that's what hurts me the most. They could have found Jesus. They could have turned away. Look, as you guys can see, like literally look at the pictures, man. It's sad. Look at, it's sad. This stuff is real. We got to wake up and realize that there's spiritual things going on. There's a spirit realm. And we're just living in the physical. But there's a spirit realm and there's real things operating. Think about like the type of demonic oppression this guy had to have to come in here with an assault rifle and kill almost 50 people and injure a whole bunch of other people. You, you got to have some type of like just demon in you. You know, it's not normal. You guys, you have to understand that there's, there's consequences to sin. Look, I'm going to talk about all the sin, right? You're in a nightclub, you're drunk, fornication, homosexuality, rebellion, pride. Like these are all all like these are all opening the door for the enemy to just have a field day god does not want these things to happen this is not jesus's will this is not what he wants he doesn't want these things to happen but these are the spiritual consequences of rebellion of iniquity when you work iniquity this is why we have to wake up this is why evangelism is so important this is why we need to expose darkness because i get the question all the time why would god allow this to happen look because we choose 
to rebel against him. He's the one that wants to protect us, but he's given us the clear instruction on how we stay under his shadow, under his wing, how we stay in his will. The Bible even says it, abide in the shadow of the Almighty and he'll cover you, he'll protect you. But if you're not abiding in the shadow of the Almighty, which is Yahweh, Jehovah, you're abiding in a different shadow and it's not God, it's the devil who wants to kill you. So the enemy sets these things up because he has legal right. I'm telling you, there are legal rights in the spirit realm. As humans, we have free will. God does not force us to love him. He does not force us to follow him. He does not force us to like him. We make our own free will decision to choose what side we want to be on. Look how tragic this is, man. There was about 50 deaths, right? We see that happening all the time in different cities and in different urban neighborhoods around the U.S. It happens all the time. Mass shootings, kids getting killed, drive-bys. And what do you think's happening in those regions? These kids popping mollies, smoking, fornicating, just like that. They're allowing legal right. That's when they get they, they get possessed with demons and they go and do drive-bys with no type of fear because they're on drugs. You see why we have to repent? I'm pretty sure a lot of these people were in this nightclub on this night. I think it was a Saturday night and they were drugged up. They were drunk. They allowed the enemy to just have his way. My brothers and my sisters, repent today. This Today's the, today the day of repentance. If you're dealing with homosexuality, there's consequences, man. Not to say you're going to die. I don't know. Only God knows. All I'm saying is this is tragic. This is sad. Look at this. This is sad, man. If you give your life to Christ, not only will, you, will he protect you, but you'll have eternal life. You see, they died in the physical, but guess what? We're all going to die. We're all going to die, my brothers and sisters. If it's young, if it's old, doesn't matter. However, however it's going to happen, it's going to happen. My question is, where did their soul go? Where did their soul go? Did they have the chance to repent? Did they have the chance to give the life to Christ? Where did their soul go when they died? I know people come here and they mourn and they cry and it's, I get it because there's death, but listen, the Bible says, let the dead bury the dead. Jesus told them that. We let the dead bury the dead and it's not dead physically, it's spiritually. We don't even know where they're at. If they didn't repent, they're burning in hell right now. If they're burning in hell right now, only God knows, are probably wishing that their family members and friends will repent and turn their, and give their life to Christ. Probably literally wishing, just like the rich man, right? When Abraham brought Lazarus in Abraham's bosom and they saw the rich man, the rich man wished that he was just hoping that they would, that they would tell his, fr his friends and his family. Everyone gets their chance, man. Everyone gets their opportunity, man. You see, I'm not going to lie. I see a lot of these pictures of these people that passed away. There's blasphemous pictures. I've seen a guy in a nun suit with white um, paint on his face just mocking Christianity. I've seen a few other ones with the with the pendulum, the star, the, the, the demonic symbols and the satanic symbols and all that. These people, man, come on. This map, people die every day. My brothers and sisters, everybody dies. But where is your soul going to go when you die? Turn to Jesus Christ and repent. Repent today. Give your life to Christ. Repent of your sins. I wish I would have been evangelizing that night and I could have preached the gospel to at least some of them. Man, it's, it's sad. You got to preach the truth, man. Where are you from, Richard? I'm actually, I was born and raised in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, I live out here. I've been living here for about three years now. So you were here with us. I wasn't, but I did hear about it. I did hear about it, and it was, it's, it's unfortunate. So many people, they just, they didn't, they didn't have the chance to, to just say goodbye to their friends and family members like that, that they wanted to. And I see these pictures, and it's just, it's just tragic. I saw the woman here crying earlier, and it just, it brought that uh, that feeling of just mourning. That's mourning for people. Do you think she was a um, loved one, one of the victims? I felt that. I felt like maybe she she knew one of the victims, and that she and she just was reminiscing on who he was, and just the unfortunate, tragic event. You know, we all die, but to die this way is sad. It's very sad. When you come here and you see these pictures, and everyone, you can see they're so full of life, and when you know how it all ended, just your thoughts when you come here. Hey, I was just telling my friend this. I think about like immediately. I think we all we all die, but I'm just thinking about when they die. Where did they go? Their soul. So I'm, I'm a believer of Jesus, and I, and I preach the gospel. I'm actually a pastor. So I came out here and I wanted to just tell people about the good news of Jesus and how there's hope. And I and, I, and just to see this, it, it hurts my heart because I believe in heaven and hell. And just I wish that um. I wish that more people would wake up and you know, so many young kids going to the clubs, getting coked up, getting drunk, getting, you know, sticking up with heroin. And I used to be one of those people. I used to be all up in the club and I had an encounter with Jesus and he changed my life. Oh, here, today, knowing what happened seven years ago, today. Today. Just your thoughts. What, it, what, it, what does it bring up in your soul? In my soul, I feel, I, I just, I feel sorrow um, in that. I wish that again, people would uh, would wake up and, and, and not go to the the clubs, the, the alcohol, and to drugs, and, and actually and actually turn away and just focus on positive things. And I and I feel so much. I feel pain for their family because I know their family suffering. I have people that I know close to me that have died too. And and 
and, and, it, and it brings so much pain in my heart. People I know, friends and family, and the pain that it brings, that it brought my family and friends, I know it's bringing them. So I, again, I come out here to preach just to say the good news, this, the gospel that if you believe in Christ and you, and you repent of your sins, you could be saved and you can make it to heaven. Because heaven is real. Do you believe in heaven? I do. But I do appreciate you talking to us. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, guys. So you guys saw that. I just got interviewed by the news reporters. Not sure which news station it is, but I gave them the gospel. I told them why I'm here. I told them the truth. I hope that they put the whole thing on the news, man, and not try to chop it out, chop it up and make it, you know, whatever, whatever. So, yeah, man, as you guys can see, there's a Dunkin' Donuts and there's a smoke shop. So we're looking for people to interview. They're doing the same thing. So they're getting people before we do because they got the bigger cameras. But it's all good. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in these smoke shops. The smoke shop and Dunkin' Donuts and I'm going to ask the workers how they feel about this and preach to them while we're waiting for someone to encounter, man, because these people need the gospel, bro. The dead are going to bury the dead, man. We're, we're all going to die. But where are you going when you die? That's the question. So let's get it. Come on. For real? What's your name, bro? Joshua. Jo hey, man, that's what's up, man. My name is Rich. You know that. Yeah. So yeah, we're out here, bro. We're looking for people to, to get encountered, man, because this is the Pulse. You ever heard about Pulse? The shooting? There was a, uh, back in 2016, this is a homosexual club, it's a gay club. A guy came in, a Muslim, a terrorist came in and shot up the whole club and, and killed about 50 people. So we out here, we just trying to interview people to talk to them about that. And it's crazy, man. So you just saw me while you were driving? Yeah, no, no, I'm literally going to go meet up with my group and we're a part of a youth group. We're just meeting up and now we're going to go and we're going to try to do some evangelism. All of us, we're about 16, 17, 18, and I got two of them in the car and we're just, we're, yeah. We're going to go like meet right up. now. Yeah, we're going to go meet up right now. All right, I'm going to pray for you. I want you to move in power. You, you, you ever pray for the sick? They get healed. Nah. You want to, though? You want to cast out demons and all that? You believe in that? Yes. Joshua, right? Yes. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for Joshua, Lord, that he'll move in power. The Bible says, Paul said, not with wise and contentious word, but with the spirit and power. Lord, I pray an impartation right now, Lord, that he'll move in power, healing, deliverance. Father God, bless him, bless his, bless his heart, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, his friends will even receive this impartation and that they'll have divine encounters today. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Joshua. Boy, say hi. <laughs> God bless you, man. Come to our church. Yes, I don't know where it is. Um, here. I yeah. didn't know you were in Florida. Yeah. Until we just drove past, I'm like, well, he looks super familiar. <laughs> so we walked into Dunkin' Donuts and the girl behind the counter agreed to do an interview. She was touched by the Lord. She was, the, the gospel was preached to her and she got prayed for, a seed was planted. I believe one day she's gonna come to Christ and have a supernatural encounter with him. God bless her in Jesus name. Hey, how you doing? Good, I'm good, so you cool being on, on camera and everything? Yeah. So what's your name? Aubrey. Aubrey, my name is Rich, nice to meet you. So you see what's going on across the street? How does it make you feel? Um. It doesn't make me feel any type of way. I don't know. Working across from it is normal. It's not like anything special. Do you believe in a higher power? Like what? Like, do you believe when, when they died, they're going somewhere when they die? I don't really, I don't know. <laughs> not really. So what do you think is the purpose of life? I don't know. Do you ever think about it? Yeah. Like, what, what are we doing here? Like, why do we live? Like, we live to die. Like. I mean, I do believe everyone has a purpose, but I don't really believe in like higher powers and stuff. I don't like to think about stuff like that. But don't you ever like think about like, we our life is short, it's like a piece of sand in the beach, like we're gonna die? I mean, yeah, because everyone's gonna die. Do you think you have a soul? Yeah. Okay, so you have a soul. Do you have a spirit? Yeah. And you have a body. So you're like, like three in one kind of. Yeah. Were you raised Catholic? Um, yeah. And are you Mexican? No. Where are you, where are you from? I'm Puerto Rican. Okay, Puerto Rican, me too. No one ever thinks I'm Puerto Rican either. I am Puerto Rican. Everyone thinks I'm Arabic. So you don't think about where we're gonna go when we die? What if I told you that we are going somewhere when we die? What if I told you that it's, it's heaven or hell and that they're real places and I never believed in it? My entire life, I just was seeking for truth. I had a whole bunch of money, cars, houses, traveled the world, woman, but I was empty inside. And a lot of people go through sexual abuse at a young age that causes them to hate, to not even want to think about a God. And that's what actually causes people to turn like that because they get abused at a young, like seven years old, eight years old. They go through like molestation and rape and all these different things that causes them to hate God or like not think there's a God. And it causes them to rebel. And it's spiritual. There's real demons and angels. Do you believe in demons and angels? Not really. You never had like sleep paralysis or nothing like that? That stuff is real. I have, yeah. And you don't think it's demonic because it didn't feel good? I mean, I do, yeah. But like, I just don't really think about stuff like that. But it's, it felt evil, right? Well, there's, it's real. It's like we, we, can, we can get encountered by demons and angels, too. And they're fighting over our soul because we're going to go somewhere and we die. And if I told you all you have to do is put your faith in, in Jesus and what he did, that he died on a cross for us. But you know why? Because there had to be a human sacrifice. A perfect human had to die. He's God in the flesh came to be in a human. You know, we're in body vessels, body suits. And by the way, what's that right there? Those bracelets. What do they do for you? Um, I just, they're crystals. Crystals? Yes. Are they supposed to protect you? Yeah. From what? 
evil spirits. But then you said you don't believe in evil spirits. I never said I didn't believe in it. I just don't like thinking about stuff like that. Oh, okay. What if I told you that? Do you want, want the truth? I used to be a, a santero. Me. In Haiti and Puerto Rico. Deep. I used to wear all types of crystals. Thousands of dollars worth of crystals. I used to do rituals, all that. Have these type of altars. Santos. Beads around my neck. Chango, Alego, all that stuff. And I was worse than I was ever in my life. Until I had an encounter. I had a supernatural encounter with Jesus Christ in my apartment. Alone. He delivered me from demons and healed me of a disease that nobody could hit. The doctors couldn't understand. And you know when it all happened? When I, when I got rid of that stuff. That stuff actually attracts. It attracts demons. It actually is a checkpoint. Because it, it goes against the first commandment. Put no other God before him. When you put your trust in a rock over him, you're saying a rock can protect you, but the highest power can't. You're already spiritual because you think that protects you from evil spirits. So you're already spiritual. You see what I'm saying? So what if I told you, if you take those off, your whole life will change and the depression will go and the anxiety will go. You deal with that? What, depression and anxiety? I mean, I guess, like everyone else. Not everybody deals with that. You can have joy and peace. For real, what's your name, Aubrey? You really can. For real, for real. If you take those off, your whole life will change for the better. Would you be willing to take those off? All right, come on, take them off. Let me see. Not right now. <laughs> for, you take them off, I'll pray for you. I guarantee you'll encounter the Lord. I don't really believe in stuff like that, so I'm not. Okay. I know. Okay, I know you don't believe, but he really did die on the cross for your sins. He was buried and rose on the third day. And if you put your faith in him, for real, like believe and turn away from your sin, he can forgive you and he can, you're not going to be perfect, but he fills you with his spirit. Your heart changes, everything changes. I went from being a player, alcoholic, drugs, santero, all that completely changed. I have a wife, three kids. I don't, I've never drank since I've been saved. I don't even have a desire and I used to be addicted. Mali, Coke, Mexico, Tijuana. I went to Medellin, all that. I was in Paris, Greece, all that, London, moving big drugs, thousands of pounds of weed, all types of Mali. And he saved my life. I didn't go to prison or get killed or get shot at, almost killed. I literally just had an encounter with Jesus because I was seeking what's the purpose of life. He used to torment me like, what are we doing here? You work nine to five. You're no different than the man who makes a million dollars nine to five. He's still empty. If he doesn't have Christ, none of this, none of this matters. We can't take you with us where we're going next. So I know you don't believe it. Let me pray for you though right now and I'm gonna, then I'll leave. Give me your hand. The same hand with the crystals. I pray right now. Look at this. And you got a cross right here. You got a cross with a heart. Look at this. And she says she don't believe. What? All right. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, that you would bless Aubrey, Lord, that you would protect her. Show her the truth about these crystals. And I command every unclean spirit attached to him right now to be broken off. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you encounter her, save her soul, Lord. Have angels protecting her, ministering to her. And bless her mother as well. Her mother's a praying mother. Show her the truth, Lord. And any issues that she has with her father, Lord, I pray that you bring healing and forgiveness. Bless her, her siblings as well in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you have a younger brother? You don't have a little brother or like a little, like a nephew, someone like little in your life. Yeah. Who is it? Nephew. Your nephew. And he's really important to you. He means a lot to you. And you guys are like really close. Do you watch him sometimes? How old is he? He's like nine. Cool. Okay, so that kid is special to you, right? How much do you love him? Like an aunt loves her nephew? I don't know. But you love him a lot though, right? Yeah. What if I told you God loves you more than you love him? Like a father loves a daughter. And he created you in heaven. He loves you more than you can ever know. He's, he's crazy about you. He wants you to come to him because your soul's going somewhere when you die. It's going to go somewhere when you die. So I know that now, after this prayer, your entire life's about to shift and change. And you're going to come to Christ. For real. I was raised Catholic too, and I never knew Jesus. God bless you. Hey, what's up, family? So we are at UCF, and we're going to go around and just witness to the, the young lost. You know, they might be saved. I don't know. We're just going to go witness to people and just let the Spirit of God flow. Who knows what's going to happen? But yeah, we out here, man. We at UCF. And for those that don't know, I came to UCF again. Um, I said this in another video, but I came to UCF back in 2008. I was here from 2008 to 2010. I got my associate's degree here a while back. And um, it's just pretty cool to come back to this campus. You know, I lived in the barracks and all that. I lived in the barracks for about a year. Um, I was really involved in the scene. I drank a lot. I partied a lot. I was uh, associated with fraternities, but I never joined one. I almost did, but I backed out at the end when they said that you had to pay an obligation. <laughs> But I was really cool with all those people, man. I partied a lot. I, I would drink every single day. I mean, it was a religion. Getting drunk, waking up at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, getting some food, hitting the gym, playing video games, and doing it again, and drinking and drinking. And then a night or two before the exams, taking an Adderall, studying all night to barely pass it. 
that was my lifestyle. It was demonic, man. I, I went through a lot of uh, emotional stuff. There's just drama. My body just chemically couldn't take up, couldn't take it. That's when I'm, I started getting sick. I actually started getting what's called larynx pharyngeal reflux, which is um, it's called silent reflux. That's when you're, it's when it's it's not when you have an ulcer, but it's when you have a hiatal hernia and your food comes up and your acid comes up, and that's when it all started. And this thing used to torment me, man. I used to. It's, it's crazy because the only times I would not have it is when I drank. I couldn't sleep. This is when I first started getting sleep paralysis. This is the first time I got sleep paralysis. Actually twice out when I was out here in Orlando. Um, this is when I first had like my first uh, girlfriend that I loved, but I cheated on her like crazy. Hey, how you doing? You wanna be on an interview? Uh, Five minutes? Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is when I first had like my first, I guess, relationship. I actually went to, um, I used to go to class right there. I forgot which class it was, one of my classes. I used to go there to class. Yeah, man, this is when I was a whole bunch of drama. I remember she wouldn't want to leave me and she would always, you know, and, and I wouldn't want to leave her. And it was like, and I was cheating on her and it was chaos and drunkenness and just a whole bunch of witchcraft, man. It was wild. But yeah, man, um, and I even left. I left Orlando and went to New York because of how chaotic my life was down here trying to do better. And New York got worse. <laughs> New York got way worse. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, so I'm out here kind of reminiscing. I used to be popping, popping Adderalls, going to the library over here all the time and trying to study and pass my tests and all that stuff. It was just, it's kind of like trying to, trying to do good and trying to seek something, but man, none of this matters, man. I mean, going to college isn't bad. I think if God is calling you to go to college, you should go, but I think you should have a plan. I think that you should go for something that actually matters. So I, again, like I said, I, I graduated my, with my associates. Um, later on in the military, I went to Drexel University, which is in Philadelphia. I did it online when I was stationed out in Jersey, got my bachelor's degree. And then when I was overseas in Greece, I, um, I got accepted to Oklahoma State University. And I finished one year um, with a 3.9 GPA. I could have graduated, but I just, when I got back to the States, I just didn't care because that's when I started selling drugs so much. I was like, man, forget a degree. I'm making a hundred grand a month. I don't need a degree. I was just prideful. But um, yeah, man, nothing wrong with college. Right now I have a bachelor's degree in healthcare administration. I can go to any hospital, medical facility and work, making like 80K. Um, I have a FAA certification for air traffic controlling. As an air traffic controller, I got FAA certified as, um, with my AWT test. I can go take, do a little bit of training and be an air traffic controller as well, making over hundred grand, but I decided not to do any of that and to be a full-time pastor. Since, since the beginning, I was full-time ministry since I got saved. The Lord told me to go full-time ministry and that's what I've been doing. So man, look at all these. I think, this is, I think this is all the new kids coming to the school. Come on, let's get out of the way. Yeah, it is. I remember those days, man. I came here with my family when I was like 17, 18, and I got accepted. It's crazy. All those kids about to come to college. They don't know what's going on. Look at that. Yeah, gang, gang. <laughs> yeah, so we out here, man. Yeah, man. What's up, man? You want to be interviewed, bro? It's just a, it's a random channel. If you want to be on it, you, uh, you too. What is it about? We, we just ask questions. But what about? Uh, it's random questions, literally. It's not, it's not like the same questions every time. It's, it's my name, Richard Lorenzo Jr. on all social media platforms. Um, <laughs> what is it? Like what? General? I, if, I, if, I, if I ask, if I tell you, then it, it, <laughs> you're going to ruin it. Nothing disrespectful, nothing like like sexual, nothing. nothing it's just random stuff. Oh. I'll say kind of spiritual in a way. Okay. Are you a spiritual person? Uh, yeah. Are you sure you down for this interview? Two minutes? I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it being posted online. Okay, no worries, man. Hey, God bless you, bro. So yeah, like I said, UCF is a good school. I got, I got a uh, I got a seventy five percent scholarship, and then with another program, I ended up getting um a hundred percent scholarship. I was actually going to UCF, getting paid to come here and still took out a whole bunch of loans, blew a whole bunch of money on drugs, alcohol, eating fast food. I, when I came to UCF, I was 150 pounds soaking wet. And I went from 150 to 185 pounds in like two months, just from straight working out. That's when I started hitting the gym, started getting in shape, but I was mixing it with a whole bunch of alcohol, sleep deprivation. It was just, it's a bad mix for a young kid, man. So yeah, a lot of kids, are, a lot of young people are out here, you know, seeking something. Let me tell you something, man. The, the only thing that gave me fulfillment was Jesus. If you know my testimony, I went everywhere. I did almost everything. Nothing gave me fulfillment so I had an encounter with Jesus. Now I know the purpose of life. I wish I would have known it when I went to UCF because I probably would have graduated with a better degree, even though healthcare administration ain't that bad. What's up, man? You want to be on an interview, man? Oh, okay. Yeah, so we out here, man. This is the UCF library. I used to spend all nighters here, literally. How you doing? I would spend all nighters here, man. It's all night studying, studying the night before a test, just to pass. Just imagine staying all night the entire night, all the way to the morning, and just going from the library to take your test <laughs> on Adderall. You want to be in an interview? Sure. Two minutes? Yeah. Okay, cool. What's your name? Naomi. My name is Rich. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Are you an athlete? Here and there, yeah. Okay, that's what's up. How long have you been going to UCF? I'm a senior. I graduate this December. Oh, for real? Yeah. What's your degree in? 
Clinical psychology. Okay, so yeah. psychology. That's the study of the what you believe. Um, the mind. Would you say like <clears throat> it's like the soul? It's like what? Like a study of the soul. Um, do you believe we have a soul? Yes. Do you believe we have a spirit? Yes. And a body? Yeah. So like we're kind of like three in one, essentially? Uh, I guess. Because we have a soul, spirit, and body? Because mm -hmm. this, this is just like a what? Like an earthly body suit? A like muscle. it's going to go one day and die. What do you think the difference between the soul and the spirit is? I don't know, actually, I don't know. yeah. I, I think it's dope that you're getting your degree in psychology. And, and what are you trying to do after that? Are you trying to go to graduate school? So I actually um, plan to go into full-time ministry after I graduate. Yeah, I actually watch your videos. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> like, yep, wow, that's crazy. So that's great. So what's your name again? Naomi. Naomi. And you want to go full time ministry? Yeah. What do you want to do? So I don't know with what organization specifically, but I do have a passion for discipleship and evangelism um, and going on missions. So whatever, maybe a missions organization, but. I felt that like yeah. a mission trips, going out, winning the loss, yeah. discipling the youth because you're, you're Generation Z, right? Yes. So like, yeah, yeah Gen Z is uh, is rising up. And um, revival, obviously, you know, is already here. It's already sparking, but it's the, it's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's gonna it's gonna like take yeah. off. Yeah. Like even my children, my three year old, two year old, like mm -hmm. they're gonna be they're gonna see miracle signs and wonders that no one's ever seen. But um, the, the the difference between the soul and the spirit, like our soul is our mind, will, and emotions, right? So our soul is different than the spirit because it's our spirit comes from God. Mm -hmm. So you know how the book of Jeremiah says he once knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb? Mm -hmm. It's because we were spirits in heaven and we come from him. He's, he's the all powerful spirit, right? Okay. Yahweh, right? Yeah. Jehovah. So he's the all powerful spirit. We come from him. We're sent here. The minute that egg and that sperm cell collide and that light is formed, scientifically proven, that's when the soul and flesh begins okay. to, be, to, be, to, to be knitted up. Okay. So our spirit, they say spirit man, mm -hmm. spirit man or spirit woman is made perfect when we receive the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. The minute we put our, our faith in Christ, the minute we believe the gospel for real in our heart, confess from our mouth, Romans 10, 9, that's when our spirit is made perfect. It's like activated. That's when the Holy Ghost fills you and that's when everything changes. Your desires change, your heart changes. You're like, oh, I used to like this. I don't like it anymore. Whoa, I feel convicted. What's going on? Like, I actually don't want to do this and don't want to drink and smoke and fornicate. Like, I don't know what, like, yeah. That's because that, that's the true evidence of receiving the gift of, of salvation, the Holy mm -hmm. Ghost. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is just a deposit mm -hmm. of heaven. Yeah. So like this is a little piece of heaven in us, but we're going to it's the, that's all it is. Yeah. But when we go to the fullness of glory, which is heaven, it's going to be like, yeah. none of this matters at all. Yeah. I think that's dope that, um, that you received, that you did this interview with me and all that. And yeah, you no, learned. I love what you guys are doing. I've, I've watched a lot of your videos. Like I've seen you come around on campus. You actually talked to one of my friends not too long ago. Her name was Summer. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we went to high school together. And I was like, what the heck? So I didn't know you were in Orlando. So when you were coming to UCF, I was like, that was super cool. And then you going to um, meet up with, um, I, don't, I don't know what those places are, like the- The psychic the, shops and all that? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I've seen a lot of your videos and I really love what you're doing. I appreciate that. Yeah. What church do you go to? Uh, it's a church called, a small one called Cross Point over near downtown. Okay. Yeah. So you're plugged into a local church. Yeah. Where are you at again? We're in Apopka. Apopka. Like 20 minutes from here. Okay. Hey guys, you see that? That's that's the Lord. We just prayed and first person, divine oh, encounter. Was that the first person? First person. Wow. We've, been, we've been on the campus for how long, Brian? Like five minutes? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, we just got here, so. Yeah guys, so we're at the UCF library. As you guys can see, yeah, it actually changed a lot. A lot of this stuff is different. All these kids studying, preparing for tests, exams and all that. Pretty dope, right? Yeah, they did back there. They used to have like these old desks, bro. I guess they took them all out and they changed, they changed it up. That's cool. Let's see who gets encountered. How you doing, man? Studying? What exam are you taking? Stats. Stats? Stats? You're a freshman? Yeah, sophomore. sophomore. That's what's up, man. You want to be in like a two minute interview? All right, God bless you, bro. Yeah, so we out here, man. Basically me. So as we were walking to the gym at UCF, a divine appointment happened. A young girl, we asked where the gym was. Two, she agreed to do an interview. And as we interviewed her, she talked about how she was raised in the Pentecostal church. It was clear as day that she's very far from God, trying to defend other religions as well. She got encountered, she got prayed for. It was a great apologetic debate. God is amazing. What is this for? It's for my YouTube channel. Okay. It's just my name, Richard Lorenzo Jr. Okay. So you down? Yeah. Okay, cool. So what's your name? Alicia. Alicia, my name's Rich. And so we're at UCF campus, right? Mm -hmm. So what are you doing here? Um, so I'm here for RU as an RU student. That's like a research student for the summer. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, that's what's up. How old are you? I'm 19. 19? 
Wow. Oh, wait, no. I just turned 20 last, like, last week. Oh, okay. I'm 20. 20 now. Okay, that's what's up. I'm 33. Okay. So I'm older. Mm -hmm. Really old. Yeah. Do you think that's old? 33? Yeah, be honest. Um, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> no, it's okay. So my question is, um, you know, we all get old and then we all eventually die, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, do you think that we have a soul? Yes. And do you think we have a spirit? Yes. So what's the difference between the soul and the spirit? I mean, it depends what angle you're looking at it. What about for you? Like, what do you okay. think? So I grew up Pentecostal. So for us, the spirit is like the Holy Spirit. And like, that's God. And then you have a soul, which God gave you. Um, I kind of went away from Pentecostalism. But I guess if I thought about it like that, that's probably what I would say. And our soul is just like what makes every human mm -hmm. like special and like has purpose and stuff like that. So our soul is like our what? Like our mind, will, and emotions? Like who we are, our personality? Yeah. And our spirit before we receive the Holy Spirit is what? I don't know. I, it's kind of like, like like waiting for the Holy Spirit. Like it's just like, cause, because the book of Jeremiah says he knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb, right? Yeah. So he knew us as spirits. Not I, We didn't have a soul or body yet. So like we come from, obviously, you know, Yahweh, Jehovah. Mm -hmm. We come from his spirit. And then we're sent here to earth on a mission. Yes. Essentially, right? Mm -hmm. And what's the mission you think? Um, I think to fulfill whatever purpose, I want to say that, but then it's like, there's some people who don't get that opportunity. So it's hard. That's kind of why I go back and forth with how I think about a soul and a spirit and mm -hmm. how I think about it. Cause then there's some people who never get that chance to really like fulfill what they're here to do. So. They, they don't fulfill it. Right. Yeah. Because you know, that's, that's the reason everyone fears death because they don't, the only reason we care about that, like not dying. Like we, I don't want to die is because we, we, we all believe in our spirit deep within that we have a purpose to fulfill. Think about that. People don't want to die because they're like, man, I had so much to do. Yeah. And it's like if you feel like you're getting cut short. But if you fulfill your purpose, you're like kind of ready to go. Yeah. So what if I told you our purpose is, is in Christ? Like we're here assigned to, to glorify God. I'm a Christian. Okay. I, wasn't, I wasn't raised Christian. You were raised Christian. I wasn't. Yeah. I was raised in the streets. Yeah. I was raised like drug dealing and I was raised like like robbing houses mm -hmm. and I mean I still made it to UCF. I was living a double lifestyle. I'd yeah. be I'd be out here every day drinking, selling drugs, I was moving pounds of weed. Like I was and I, it kept going. Eventually I had houses, cars, like I had all these women around the world. I lived in Greece, London, Barcelona, like I did I did everything, right? Mm -hmm. Empty though. Yeah. And I started doing new age. So I actually went to Haiti, Puerto Rico, started oh. practicing voodoo. Like deep into spiritual practices, yeah. shamanism. Like Santeria. Santeria, yeah, because I'm Puerto Rican. Okay. So I got deep into Santeria, deep into voodoo. I was a Santero. Mm -hmm. I wore the beads around my neck. I had the altars. I used mm -hmm. to put salt in corners, ritual baths. I used to take crystals, thousands of dollars worth of crystals, the big ones, small ones, balance chakras. I was deep, yeah. but I was empty. And I kept wondering what's the full purpose of life. I studied Islam, Buddhism, raised Catholic. I never thought it was Jesus. But then I had a supernatural encounter with Jesus Christ in my apartment alone. Like literally by myself, mm -hmm. got knocked to the ground. Demons came out of me. Started speaking in tongues. I didn't even know what tongues was, mm -hmm. but I just couldn't stop it. Yeah. Like the fire of God came upon me. So I wasn't raised Pentecostal. And I'm not even Pentecostal now, yeah. but I believe in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. All that, like what ha I think what happens with a lot of people raised in the church is they're raised in religion. Yeah. They're forced to, to do certain things. Dress this way because, do this because, but you can't follow a, a rule, like a law-based kingdom if you don't know the king. Yeah. He's the king. You know, the democracy in a kingdom is different. Democracy, we have the right to vote. A kingdom, the king makes the rules. Mm -hmm. So I think people, a lot of young people raised, anyone, I meet people all the time raised in religion, they hate the church. Mm -hmm. And they're like, man, I don't, don't want to, because they have bad experiences. Did, did you have a bad experience with the church? Yeah, I did. <laughs> what happened? Um, my family was really strict. And um, I just feel like there's a lot of like political agendas within my church. And it's in a kind of like ignorant I would say like area, like they're not very well educated. So I, everyone just agreed with that agenda. And I what, what was the agenda? Um, like very Republican, conservative. They didn't, I believe that like Islam, Judaism and Christianity is all like the same. They're the Abrahamic religions. I believe that they're the same, but they kind of felt like they were different and were hateful towards the other two. So that's why. I studied the Quran like deep before I even came to the Bible. And even, um, like you said, Judah, Judaism, too, as well, as well like the Jewish belief, yeah. the Torah, right? I studied the Kabbalah, the Torah. Mm -hmm. So, like, a lot of, like, Islam, to me, didn't make sense how they took from, the, the, like, the Bible and the Torah. And then this guy named Muhammad just said, you know, you know kill the infidel. And if they don't believe, and, and, and you're going to believe in this 900 years after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The Torah talks about the Messiah coming, all these prophetic declarations, foreseeing of events to come, and that all started happening. 
at a hundred percent accuracy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I was like, but I needed an encounter. It wasn't here. My mind, I was studying, I was studying so much deep stuff, quantum physics. I was taking LSD, like I was deep in, in the spiritual stuff. I was teaching people. But then when I had the encounter with Jesus, you can't deny the spirit of God, like the presence of God that I could at any point access just to worship, like how I cast devils out. Like we see miracles in our church, not no, not religious miracles, like people just falling. I'm talking about like real demonic manifestations, like yeah. stuff that scares people. Mm -hmm. I see people get out of wheelchairs. Like, you know, sometimes in churches you hear about that one miracle two, 20 generations back, like, yeah. but you don't see it all the time. What if I told you in our church, we see it every service. And it's a whole bunch of young people coming that don't look like, I'm a pastor. You run the church? I run the church. Oh, okay. Would you expect that? No, no honestly, no. He goes to our church. Bro, do I preach like this sometimes? Yeah. I don't, I don't wear a button down all the time. I could wear a button down if I want to wear a button down. I dress however the, like I feel. And people get saved every service, filled with the spirit. Cure the diseases, schizophrenia, bipolar, like health, health issues. How many times have you seen it, bro? Yeah, there's testimonies, a lot of testimonies of people like getting healed. Too many times. What was that lady that had that issue? Oh yeah, she had a uh, like a sister or something like that or whatever it was, and it just went away. It's not me. It's the Holy Ghost. He and God hates religion. He hates it. That's why he rebuked the religious people in the Bible, the Pharisees, because they were putting yokes on people, political agendas. They would put yokes on people and tell them like, follow, like I'm the leader, you follow me. But in Christ, it's not like that. It's everyone is equal. Yeah. And we build. Islam is. I'm gonna tell you this because I've studied it. I've been to the mosques. I've talked to imams. It's demonic. It's very demonic. I could say this because I know it. I was in Islam before I was a Christian. I was deep. Yeah. Like I studied, have you read the Quran? Um, I have read parts of it. Like the Surah, have you read the Surah? Yeah, I've read it. says to kill the infidel. Um, I guess not. I mean, I think that it all comes from interpretation. Like how you talk about Muhammad. Um, he married a nine year old. He had sex with her. He actually married her when she was six and had sex with her when she was nine. Well, I think that is, he is like, he's a prophet. Like come to the, their, their religion, that's their prophet, whereas we have Catholic priests who tell Catholic people what to do all the time, and I feel like they're not as persecuted for it. And oh, yeah, I, the Catholic Church is demonic. Yeah. Very. I think it's the church. It's the, it's like, I think the Antichrist is going to come out of the Catholic Church. I think the Pope is, is a false prophet. Mm -hmm. Just like I, I know Muhammad's a false prophet, and I know how Islam, like, people are, about my friends that are Muslim, they're getting, they're hurt, bro. Like, they're, you think it's right that a man can have five wives? I mean, I feel like. Polygamy? But Christians used to have polygamy. But they, but it's, but God said it. Jesus said, it. no, it's one wife, one husband. Because of the hardness of your heart, you can get divorced if there's a sexual immorality. Mm -hmm. but, but the way God, he says it in the Bible, he intended it to be one man and one woman. Yeah. So, like, they messed up. Yeah. But there's also a lot of Christian uh, denominations who do the same. And um, Really? Yeah. Some weird stuff, right? I would think so. I mean, in the in the West and stuff, like, you know, obviously a lot of, like, I guess, like, more mainstream Christians don't, like, approve of that, but it does happen. And, like, my Muslim friends that I know, like, they're, their families are not into polygamy. They, and I really respect a lot of their values that they have from their religion. That so, comes from the Bible. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just, I like to... I believe that there is, you know, like a spirit. A higher power. Yes. But you just don't know who he is. Yeah. Or, or, or I think it. that's just not the same, like, just like huge human that I think the Christian church makes out to be. I think that it's just more of a spirit. And You know, even the word Christian was a derogatory term back then. They were killing the early Christians, the Roman papacy. Yeah. And they were saying Christians, like a derogatory term, but they were actually called followers of the way. And the church is the body of Christ. There's a lot of false prophets. There are too many, but the Bible says it's going to happen. Seven, five out of the seven churches will be corrupted and told to come to repentance. That's over 80%. So God already said it was going to happen. But the, I believe that that was divine. What just, right now, what just happened? We're really trying to find the gym. But I, I, I know. I'm like, were you ever trying to find the gym? Yes, we really are. Like, we're trying to go over there to actually evangelize. Oh, okay. So, like, I have a YouTube channel, all that. All that. What, what's your name again? Alicia. Can I pray for you right now? Yeah. And when's the last time you've been to church? It's been a couple months, I think. When you do go, do you go to the Pentecostal church? Yes. Why don't you try going to something different? Um, my grandfather's the pastor. So yeah, you honor him, you respect him. Yeah. That's not a problem. But what about your relationship with Jesus? Um, I think I do have one because I see like crazy coincidences in my life that... Regularly? Regularly, yeah. That can't be coincidences. Because people are praying for you. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Alicia, Lord. I pray that, that you just continue to show her. Let the divine divine appointments keep happening, Lord. I pray that, because this is she's a leader, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, that she will lead. She will help many other people. She has a, she has maturity for her age, Lord. I pray that you, you help her you help her use the youth. 
Father God, when she does have that powerful encounter with you, Lord, that she just starts leading people to Christ, I believe she's called to be an evangelist. So, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you just show her, show her more things, let her have the encounter, have angels surrounding her, which she already does. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank You're going to you. be an evangelist. You're too smart. You're looking for things like college and all that stuff, which is good. That's how I was, too. Very smart, but I, I, but I was empty. Yeah. I was lost. At a certain age, you're like, bro, what the heck is going on? What are we doing here? I used to defend my, my Muslim friends, too. I used to defend my Buddhist friends. I used to do yoga, like, years. I did all that. I used to have all that stuff. But I'm telling you, you're going to come back to Christ, and you're going to really come back because you're going to have a radical encounter with him. You're going to be delivered, and you will have a husband, and you will settle down. You'll flee from fornication. I was the worst. I had many girls. I have a wife and three kids now. Mm. I'm, I'm faithful. I don't even think about it. I, I couldn't even be faithful to one woman. But now God freed me from all them demons. Mm. You're going to get freed because you have a calling. There's, you can't run. You know this too. Mm. But in God's timing. God bless you. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too. I hope you guys have good luck. Thank you. Hey, what's going on, family? God bless you all. Make sure if you like this video, click that like button. Also, go comment down below what you liked about the video. Click the bell icon for more notifications and go share this video to all your friends and family. Also, there are many accounts impersonating me on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. I will never ask you for money through WhatsApp. So if you get someone impersonating me with a fake account, make sure to block it and report it. Also, if you'd like to partner with us, click the description down below on the video and you'll see all the ways to partner. We appreciate all those who help us expand this vision to the nations, partnering with us in prayer and financially. We thank you so much. And also those who partner with us, liking the video, commenting down below, clicking that bell notification and sharing it to all your friends and family. We thank you. The gospel is being spread throughout the nations. People are getting saved, delivered and healed. The Lord Jesus Christ is being glorified. Thank you for all our partners in Jesus name.